guitar technician's reunion with her sister becomes a nightmarish ordeal when her nephew steals a deadly relic that unleashes powerful demonic entities. As Teresa peacefully reads on the lake pier, a swiftly approaching drone startles her. Moments later, Caleb, her cousin's new boyfriend and the drone's owner, shows up and playfully mocks her shocked expression on the drone's footage. After Teresa proposes that Caleb should check on her cousin's well-being, the indifferent man casually remarks that he already gave her medication to help her sleep off her illness. This prompts the annoyed Teresa to check her cousin's condition herself. In the cabin, Teresa spots her cousin Jessica lying in bed and tries to ask permission to borrow her car and leave because she can't stand Caleb. When she receives no response, she sits on a nearby chair and continues reading Wuthering Heights. However, Jessica begins to recite lines from the book in an eerie tone, and Teresa is taken aback when she sees her cousin suddenly sitting upright in bed. Frightened, Teresa rises from her seat, pleading with her cousin to stop the strange behavior. Suddenly, Jessica tumbles to the side of the bed, prompting Teresa to rush over and assess her condition, only to find her throwing up before losing consciousness. As Teresa leans in to check her cousin's heartbeat, the possessed Jessica opens her eyes and viciously tears off Teresa's scalp. Later, the injured Teresa stumbles towards the dock to warn Caleb. Suddenly, Jessica arrives and snatches the drone, deliberately slicing her own face with it before plunging into the lake. To rescue his girlfriend, Caleb immediately jumps into the water, only to end up mutilated and decapitated. Startled by the sight of Caleb's severed head on the pier, Teresa fearfully watches Jessica emerge from the water and levitate before her eyes. One day earlier, while in the restroom of the gig she was working at, guitar technician Beth performed a pregnancy test and discovered that she is with child. Eager to seek guidance, she set off to see her tattoo artist sister Ellie, who has three children named Bridget, Danny, and Cassie. In an apartment in Los Angeles, Ellie tinkered with her tattoo gun when her daughter Bridget interrupted her to inquire about the black t-shirt she intended to wear for a protest. Meanwhile, Danny, an aspiring DJ, blared his tracks loudly from his room as Cassie, the youngest, cut off her doll's head using her mom's scissors. Suddenly, the doorbell rang, so Bridget opened it to find Jake, their neighbor, neighbor who had a crush on her. When he extended an invitation to watch a horror movie at his place, Bridget declined and closed the door. While the siblings were playing, the doorbell rang once more, prompting Ellie to open the door for her sister Beth. Upon presenting Cassie with a gift, Beth proceeded to unveil a mug she claimed was meant for their dad, causing an uncomfortable silence amongst the family. Seeing Beth's confusion, Ellie instructed Danny to drive with his sisters to get pizza, so that she and Beth could speak privately. With the children gone, Ellie finally opened up about her separation from her husband. She confessed that she had tried calling her to discuss the matter, but was unable to get through, since Beth was preoccupied with work. As Beth tried to apologize and work things out, Ellie changed the subject, informing her that she could sleep on the couch for the night. As the kids got out of the car with a pizza, a powerful earthquake occurred, causing a massive sinkhole to form in the parking lot. After the ground finally stopped shaking, Danny ventured into the hole and stumbled upon an unexpected find, a vault containing vintage phonograph records and an ominous looking book. Shortly after, the kids returned to the apartment, to Ellie's relief. In his bedroom, Danny uncovered the deadly book and revealed his intention to sell it to provide financial assistance to their mom. However, Bridget pointed out that their mom wouldn't like it because he stole the book. As Danny tried to open the tome that sealed with sharp claws, he injured his finger, causing his blood to drop on the cover, which strangely absorbs into the material. Soon after, the book opened by itself, prompting Danny and Bridget to see the pages filled with horrifying drawings. Scared, Bridget interrupted Danny's browsing and closed the book, telling him to get rid of it tomorrow. Later, after Bridget left, Danny decided to play the records he took from the vault. To his surprise, he realized that the track was playing in reverse. To listen to the track properly, he spun the record in the other direction. As he listened to the first record, he discovered that it contained the accounts of a rejected priest who had been researching one of three volumes of the Necronomicon. On the second record, the priest recited an incantation that unknowingly resurrected demonic and entities known as deadites. As the priest in the record chanted, Danny tried to stop it but failed. Suddenly, the book on the table started flipping pages on its own. 
Following the successful incantation, an unseen malevolent entity emerged from the ground and made its way to the apartment lobby. It then attacked Ellie, forcefully pushing her back into the elevator. Suddenly, the elevator abruptly plummeted to the ground, causing Ellie to pass out. When Ellie regained consciousness, she desperately cried out for help and tried to escape the tormenting grasp of the unseen spirit. However, her attempts proved futile as the evil entity brutally suspended her with the elevator wires. Meanwhile, a sudden power outage occurred, affecting only their apartment building, prompting Beth, Danny, Cassie, and Bridget to gather in the living room. Suddenly, a possessed Ellie returned and proceeded directly to the kitchen, where she ominously turned on the stove and threw some blood-filled eggs on the frying pan. As Beth confronted Ellie about her erratic behavior, the possessed woman shared her morbid dream of cutting her children open and climbing inside their bodies. Suddenly, she crawled on the kitchen floor and threw up white liquid, surprising her family. Before she collapsed, the real Ellie momentarily regained control of her body and told Beth to not let the evil entity take her children. Afterward, Beth and Danny carried Ellie out of the apartment and tried to go to the hospital, but both the elevator and stairs were inaccessible. Realizing that Ellie might have passed away, Beth sought help from neighbors Mr. Fonda and Gabriel, who invited them to pray for the possessed woman's eternal rest. Moments later, a voicemail from Ellie suddenly played on Beth's phone, with her distressed voice claiming that she is engulfed in flames. Suddenly, her phone screen cracked, causing her to drop it in shock. When Beth turned to Ellie, she noticed a fly land in her sister's eye, causing her to blink and reawaken just as her children arrived. After informing the children that Ellie's burning up, they swiftly placed her in a bathtub filled with cold water to save her. However, to their horror, Ellie rolled her eyes to the back of her head and unexpectedly leapt to the ceiling, scaring Danny, Bridget, and Beth. She then let out a piercing scream, loud enough to break nearby mirrors and for the neighbors to hear. Suddenly, she closed her mouth and collapsed into the bathtub, before quickly emerging and crawling towards Beth and Danny, prompting them to run to the living room. As Ellie exited the bathroom, she picked up a shard and used it to attack Beth, successfully impaling her hand. Suddenly, Bridget intervened and tried to stop her mom, causing her to be the next target. Ellie jumped on her and cut Bridget's cheek with a tattoo gun. Just as Ellie tried to lick Bridget's cheek wound, Danny used a chair to knock her off his sister. However, Ellie quickly got back on her feet and pointed at Cassie as her next victim. Gabriel's arrival caused Ellie to shift her attention and jump on him. As they moved towards the hallway, Ellie swallowed the man's eye and then spit it directly into Jake's mouth, causing the teen to choke and perish. Taking advantage of the distraction, Beth immediately locked the door, leaving the possessed woman to pound her head on it. To further protect themselves, they moved the cabinet to block the door. Moments later, the pounding stopped, prompting Beth to cautiously peer through the peephole. To her horror, she witnessed Ellie chasing Scott and ruthlessly hurling his lifeless body across the hall. Before she could process the shock, Gabriel appeared in the peephole, desperately seeking help. However, Ellie swiftly arrived, subjecting the neighbor to a gruesome fate, leaving Beth to witness the horrifying spectacle. Shortly after, Mr. Fonda shot Ellie, but the possessed woman ended up taking the old man's life too. Desperate, Beth opened the window and asked for help from a passerby, but the heavy rain masked her voice. Later, Bridget confronted Danny, pointing out that their mother resembled the images depicted in the stolen book. However, Danny denied any association, refusing to accept blame for their mother's disturbing transformation. As Danny and Bridget had an altercation, Beth intervened and reminded the siblings not to turn on each other. Afterward, Danny showed Beth the book and disclosed the details about the priest saying a weird prayer on the phonograph. Meanwhile, as Bridget examined her wound, she noticed it darkening and spreading on her face. Suddenly, a dark fluid started running down her nose and eyes, causing her to panic. Distressed, she hastily tried to rinse her mouth, but instead threw up worms all over the sink. Meanwhile, Cassie heard her mother's singing voice and curiously followed the sound, leading her to the peephole and facing Ellie. The mother calmly mentioned that her husband came home to see them, and that they're getting back together. As Ellie moved closer to the peephole, she spoke in a motherly tone, asking Cassie to open the door for her parents. As a result, Cassie unlocked the door, allowing Ellie's hand to grab the child's throat. As soon as Beth and Danny heard this, they rushed to the door to save Cassie and lock Ellie out again. 
As Ellie demanded they open the door, she insulted Beth for being a groupie. After the ordeal, Beth ordered Danny and Cassie to go to the latter's room. As Danny cried, Cassie comforted him, pointing out that her doll head that she placed on a stick will protect them. Upon hearing strange noises from the kitchen, Beth entered and saw Bridget eating the wine glass, revealing that she's possessed. She then spit out a shard on Beth's face and crawled towards her, prompting the guitar technician to kick her off. As Bridget continued to approach her, Beth kicked the cheese grater to fend off any further attacks. Unfortunately, Bridget caught the grater and used it to injure Beth's leg. As Beth screamed in excruciating pain, she immediately grabbed the spatula and hurled it toward Bridget's face, causing a distraction. Quick on her feet, she took the saucepan and struck the possessed teen, rendering her unconscious. Soon, Danny arrived in the kitchen and saw his possessed sister on the floor. Shortly after, Bridget awakened and ran after Danny, following her to Cassie's room. After knocking Danny down, Bridget tried to attack Cassie, but the child positioned the sharp rod in front of her, unintentionally piercing it through Bridget's mouth. After the possessed Bridget tried to pull the rod out, she collapsed to the floor. To comfort her trembling niece, Beth approached Cassie and gently cleaned her face. The girl voiced her concern, questioning whether they too would suffer the same fate as Ellie and Bridget. In response, Beth promised her niece that she would do everything in her power to protect them. However, Cassie pointed out that Beth would make a good mother because she knew how to lie to children. After Danny tied Bridget up in bed, Beth insisted on listening to the vinyl records, hoping that she could find a way to stop everything. When Danny reminded her that there was a power outage, Beth used her technician skills to power up the turntable. Before locking herself in Danny's room, Beth handed her nephew a sharp tool for protection. Beth then wore her headphones and listened to the record. When she heard the priest's instruction to bury the book deep in the secret vault if someone finds it. As Beth continued to listen intently, she learned that the priest took desperate measures to neutralize his possessed colleagues, revealing that he had no choice but to dismember them entirely in order to halt their rampage. Unbeknownst to the rest of the family, in the hallway, Ellie looked up and devised a plan to use the air vents to re-enter the apartment. Meanwhile, Danny and Cassie heard strange sounds coming from the air vent. To their horror, a wrapped-up Bridget arose from bed and tried to attack Cassie. Danny quickly intervened and pierced the knife into Bridget's body, protecting his little sister. Unfortunately, Bridget retaliated and took Danny to the kitchen counter, where she pulled the blade from her body and used it to pierce Danny's bicep. The possessed teen then threw up blood on Danny and stabbed him again. To save himself, Danny lit up the stove, lighting Bridget on fire. As Beth listened to the haunting track, she caught a glimpse of Ellie's reflection in the window, causing her instincts to kick in and prompt a defensive response. Reacting swiftly, Beth used a sharp tool to pierce through Ellie's neck. However, her actions proved futile as she was forcefully thrown out of the room, leaving her in a state of shock and disbelief. As she regained her composure, Beth's gaze fell upon Cassie, hiding beneath the table, and Danny who had suffered severe injuries. Before Danny passed away, he apologized to Cassie. Suddenly, Ellie came out of the room and attacked Beth. As Ellie pinned her down, she sniffed her stomach and realized that she's pregnant, prompting her to press her fingers on it to end the baby's life. Thanks to Cassie's quick thinking, she slid a pair of scissors toward Beth, which Beth swiftly grabbed and used to pierce through Ellie's nose, rendering her unconscious. Seconds later, Beth and Cassie made their way to the hallway, hoping to find a means of escape. However, their efforts to break through the door leading to the stairs proved futile. Desperate, Beth sees Mr. Fonda's shotgun, preparing to shoot the door open. However, Ellie awakened and was about to attack Beth with menacing intent. To slow her sister down, Beth aimed the gun and shot Ellie's leg off. Playing mind games, Ellie tried to get Cassie on her side, claiming that Beth is attempting to separate her from her own mother. In response, Cassie asserts that she's no longer her mother. After Beth shot Ellie's arm off, a possessed Mr. Fonda awakened and interrupted her, prompting her to strike him with a gun. Unfortunately, the rest of the neighbors reawakened as deadites, causing Beth and Cassie to go inside the elevator to escape. After the elevator closed, blood started to fill up the vessel. As Beth tried to escape through the top, the deadites appeared and tried to grab her. Luckily, the added weight pushed the elevator down and caused it to crash in the lobby, finally releasing Beth and Cassie. Upon retrieving the car keys, they both ran towards the car and managed to drive off. However, just when they were about to go out of the gate, the car stopped moving. When Beth looked out the car window, she saw the deadites approaching, prompting her to take Cassie and hide. As they tried to escape through the closing park gate, Beth successfully rolled to the other side, but Cassie was pulled back by the deadites. 
As the Deadites dragged Cassie onto the truck and attempted to cut her with a chainsaw, Beth managed to break through the gate and shoot the Deadites just in time, catching their attention. As they tried to get Beth into the wood chipper attached to the vehicle, Cassie turned the machine off, allowing Beth to grab the chainsaw. Beth then instructed Cassie to turn the machine on before pushing them towards it with the chainsaw. After eliminating all the deadites, only Ellie's severed head remained and insulted Beth, prompting the enraged woman to kick the possessed head into the wood chipper. Afterward, Beth rushed to hug Cassie, who's crying over the horrifying events and the tragic fate of her siblings and mom. They both walked out of the building, free from the deadites' threat. The following day, Jessica, who turned out to be a resident of the same building, headed to the parking lot to get ready to leave for her vacation at the lake house. After her call with Teresa, she noticed something strange in her rearview mirror. After getting out of her car to check, she sees the blood-stained parking lot due to last night's events. As she trembled upon the horrific sight, an invisible evil entity zoomed in and possessed her while she screamed in fright. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.